Unveil the intricate dynamics of the attention economy and learn how to reclaim control over your life in the face of powerful technological forces. Stick to the end, you will might not imagine what you are going to listen in the last insights. While numerous technological advancements have marked the past two decades, one that often goes unnoticed is the inception of the like button in 2007 on FriendFeed, a now forgotten social feed aggregator. This seemingly innocuous feature, present on every subsequent social media platform, serves as a powerful tool to gather user data, track preferences, and keep individuals perpetually engaged through notifications. As people increasingly recognize the potential harms of social media and smartphone technologies, a growing wave of resistance is emerging. Backed by research revealing the detrimental impacts of these digital tools, there is a palpable shift in perspective. Professor Cal Newport delves into this landscape, conducting a unique experiment with 1,600 volunteers who embraced a month-long technological sabbatical. Their experiences and feedback formed the basis of Newport's exploration into digital minimalism, a transformative approach to counter the overwhelming influence of digital distractions and rediscover a more fulfilling and meaningful life. In the following insights, discover the striking parallels between social media and big tobacco, learn how the Amish community offers valuable insights into optimizing smartphone usage, and unravel the narrative of attention becoming a commodity more valuable than oil in the contemporary world. In 2016, Andrew Sullivan, a renowned writer, penned a 7,000-word article for New York Magazine detailing how the incessant flow of news, images, and online content had profoundly affected him, leading to what he termed a psychological breakdown. The symptoms he described, such as the compulsive need to check smartphones for texts, emails, and social media updates, resonate with many in today's digital age. The question arises, how did we reach this point? It's crucial to recognize that the technology at the heart of this issue wasn't initially designed for the pervasive use we see today. When Steve Jobs unveiled the first iPhone in 2007, he positioned it as the best iPod ever, a device for making calls and enjoying music. According to Andy Grignon, an Apple engineer on the project, Jobs initially dismissed the idea of the iPhone becoming a platform for third-party apps and gaming. Similarly, Facebook, when launched in 2004, was perceived as a clever novelty for learning about friends of friends, not a significant news source or a prevalent time-consuming platform. In 2004, college students were more engaged with the computer strategy game Snood than Facebook. As people incorporated iPhones and Facebook into their lives, they didn't anticipate spending hours daily immersed in these technologies. The addictive nature of these tools has evolved intentionally, shaped by the efforts of social media engineers. In 2017, Bill Maher likened social media tycoons to the new big tobacco, marketing products designed for maximum addictiveness. Various tactics, including exploiting the human desire for social approval, have been employed to capture and retain attention. The introduction of the Facebook Thumbs Up button in 2009 marked a significant milestone, transforming the act of posting into a highly interactive experience. The primal urge to check notifications and gauge approval from one's social circle has become deeply ingrained in our behavior. Cal Newport proposes a defense mechanism against the pervasive influence of Silicon Valley by introducing the concept of digital minimalism, a lifestyle emphasizing the philosophy that less can lead to more fulfillment. Unlike quick fixes such as disabling smartphone notifications, Newport advocates for a more profound transformation in the way we engage with technology. Digital minimalism draws inspiration from the minimalist lifestyle advocated by figures like Marie Kondo, promoting the idea of inviting into our lives only what truly brings joy. Newport applies this principle to the digital realm, encouraging individuals to evaluate whether websites, apps, or services align with their values in a unique and indispensable manner. The philosophy of digital minimalism goes beyond mere evaluation, it urges individuals to optimize their use of technology to maximize value while minimizing the associated time and energy costs. For instance, if a social media platform like Twitter significantly benefits one's career, 
setting purposeful rules can allow for efficient use without unnecessary time consumption. Tyler, one of the participants in Newport's digital minimalism experiment, initially valued social media for staying connected, entertainment, and networking. However, upon closer examination, he realized that the benefits were outweighed by the time it demanded. Embracing digital minimalism, Tyler decided to close his social media accounts. A year later, he experiences a transformed life, more exercise, increased reading, volunteering, learning music, and quality time with family. Tyler, once skeptical of quitting social media, now sees no reason to continue using it. Digital minimalism, as exemplified by Tyler's story, showcases the potential for a more focused and fulfilling life by intentionally curating our digital interactions. Digital minimalism is grounded in three core principles. Clutter is costly, optimization is crucial, and intentionality is fulfilling. The first principle draws inspiration from the new economics concept popularized by Henry David Thoreau in Walden. This approach considers life costs when evaluating the true value of something. Applying this to digital minimalism, individuals should assess the real gains and costs, both in time and attention, associated with the digital media they allow into their lives. The scrutiny involves questioning whether the same task can be accomplished in a different, more efficient way. The second principle aligns with the law of diminishing returns in economics, emphasizing that continuous addition does not lead to sustained improvements. When it comes to staying informed, for instance, adding multiple sources may result in overwhelming and incomprehensible distractions. Instead of incessantly adding sources, the focus should be on optimizing tools. For example, using an app like Instapaper to collect and read articles over the weekend without ads. The third principle takes inspiration from the Amish lifestyle, which is often misconstrued as entirely anti-technology. In reality, the Amish assess and question technology based on its alignment with their fundamental values of family and community. Similarly, individuals practicing digital minimalism should adopt a value-based approach, evaluating whether each digital tool truly benefits and supports their values and objectives. In essence, digital minimalism encourages a thoughtful and intentional approach to the adoption of digital tools, emphasizing value, efficiency, and alignment with personal values. Embarking on the journey of digital minimalism involves a transformative process that begins with a 30-day digital declutter, followed by a meticulous reintroduction of selected tools. The initial 30 days serve as a period of deliberate disconnection from non-essential technology, challenging individuals to cut ties with anything beyond the necessities for daily functioning. While this might initially expose ingrained addictive habits, participants in Newport's 1,600-person experiment reported a swift adjustment, realizing that many seemingly indispensable apps were, in fact, forgettable. It's crucial to distinguish between convenience and necessity during this phase. For instance, quitting Facebook might seem daunting, but the absence of social media often strengthens real-world connections through direct communication and face-to-face -face interactions. Simultaneously, this period prompts introspection to identify one's genuine interests and values outside the digital realm. Understanding personal priorities is vital because the subsequent phase involves finding fulfilling alternatives to replace the void left by the absence of social media and unnecessary technology. After the initial 30-day declutter, a deliberate reintroduction process begins. Individuals must critically evaluate each technology by asking three fundamental questions. Firstly, does this technology support something deeply valued? If affirmative, proceed to the second question, is it the best way to support this value? For instance, while Instagram may seemingly connect individuals with distant relatives, a more meaningful way could be a weekly Skype call. Most often, social media fails to pass this scrutiny. If a technology does clear the initial two questions, the final inquiry follows, how can I use this tool to maximize its benefit while minimizing harm? Digital minimalists don't merely use or abstain from a tool, they strategically optimize its usage. 
For instance, if Twitter aligns with their values, they might restrict its use to once or twice a week, avoiding mindless scrolling on their phones and only following meaningful connections. This meticulous approach to digital tools ensures that they serve a purpose, adding value to life without unnecessary distractions. If you've discovered even a small nugget of value in our content, we would truly appreciate your support through likes, shares, and subscriptions. Make sure to stay tuned till the end for more insightful nuggets, and don't forget to provide us with your feedback. Thanks for being with us. Now, let's get back to the review. In the pursuit of meaningful and lasting change, digital minimalism recommends practices that align with a lifestyle and offer genuine, rewarding value, steering clear of fleeting life hacks. One such vital practice is solitude, a precious commodity often eroded by modern technology. Individuals born before the smartphone era may recall a time when life wasn't dominated by constant digital connectivity. However, those born between 1995 and 2012, referred to as the iGen, have grown up immersed in smartphone culture, spending an average of nine hours a day on these devices. Research by generational expert Jean Twenge reveals a concerning rise in psychological health issues within the iGen, marked by increased rates of depression, suicide, eating disorders, homesickness, and pervasive anxiety. Underlying these issues is what can be termed solitude deprivation, a deficiency in time away from screens and external stimuli. Solitude is essential for processing emotions, reflecting on relationships, contemplating life's priorities, and allowing the mind to attain a state of calm clarity. The beauty of solitude lies in its accessibility, whether experienced in a crowded cafe or a quiet subway ride, as long as it offers a space for solitary contemplation. A practical recommendation from digital minimalism is to leave the phone at home during outings, reminiscent of the pre-smartphone era. While this might initially seem unconventional, it opens up avenues for genuine human connection and reflection. For those concerned about emergencies, a compromise can be storing the phone in the glove compartment or another less accessible spot. Additionally, the age-old practice of taking long walks is endorsed as a classic source of solitude. Renowned thinkers such as Thoreau, Arthur Rimbaud, Jean-Jacques Rousseau, and Friedrich Nietzsche have extolled the virtues of walking as a means of finding inspiration and generating their best ideas. The key to reaping the benefits of this practice lies in undertaking these walks without the distraction of earbuds or screens, allowing the mind the space it needs for solitary contemplation and reflection. Our brains, crafted over thousands of years for intricate social interactions, find emojis and hashtags inadequate substitutes for meaningful connections, as indicated by the American Journal of Preventive Medicine, linking increased social media usage to heightened loneliness. A pivotal recommendation from digital minimalism is to refrain from mindless clicking, especially the ubiquitous, like, button. The idea is to go beyond superficial comments and emojis and instead reserve those sentiments for genuine conversations, the kind that takes place face-to-face -face or over a phone call. Shifting away from the illusion of meaningful interactions on social media fosters a richer social life. While the transition might initially be met with concern from friends, explaining your decision to step back from these virtual interactions can help set the expectation. Texts, messaging, and emails, while convenient for quick exchanges, often lack the depth required for fulfilling social needs. An actual phone call or in-person conversation is far more rewarding. To counteract the isolation that excessive texting can induce, a Silicon Valley executive suggests setting regular conversation hours. This practice discourages prolonged text-based exchanges, promoting the value of real-time discussions. Establishing standing invitations for real conversations is another strategy. For instance, designating Saturday mornings at a favorite coffee shop as a regular meeting time. The goal is to prioritize genuine, meaningful conversations over digital exchanges, ultimately contributing to a more fulfilling and less isolated social life. Quality leisure time, as emphasized by Aristotle, is crucial for leading a fulfilling life. The author distinguishes between high-quality leisure, 
involving activities that bring inward joy and low quality leisure characterized by digital distractions like social media or mindless binge watching digital minimalism encourages creating more space for high quality leisure while deliberately limiting low quality activities strenuous hobbies often emerge as some of the most rewarding high quality leisure activities contrary to initial perceptions of fatigue putting effort into leisure pursuits as noted by arnold bennett leads to increased satisfaction and a sense of energy physical engagement with three-dimensional objects as highlighted by gary rogowski in craftsman is essential activities that involve interacting with the physical world applying skills and creating valuable things contribute to genuine satisfaction while technology can assist in these endeavors such as using youtube tutorials for carpentry it is essential to move beyond the confines of small screens the leisure lessons of digital minimalism emphasize engaging with the physical world and pursuing activities that involve skill application and creation setting leisure goals like learning specific guitar parts for a mini concert adds purpose and momentum to high quality leisure activities deadlines contribute to maintaining the momentum and ensuring continued engagement in meaningful pursuits to manage the transition and avoid the temptation of low quality leisure it's recommended to schedule specific times for these activities rather than adopting a cold turkey approach gradually allocating more free time to high quality activities demonstrates the positive impact and diminishes the influence of digital distractions over time digital minimalism is part of a broader global movement known as the attention resistance which challenges the pervasive influence of the attention economy in the attention economy major tech companies like facebook and google profit by attracting and retaining users attention selling it to advertisers the movement emphasizes the importance of retaining autonomy and resisting tactics aimed at exploiting human vulnerabilities one effective strategy employed by the attention resistance is downgrading phones opting for simpler devices like flip phones from the early 2000s this deliberate choice to disconnect from the attention economy reflects a commitment to resist distraction and maintain focus on more meaningful aspects of life another approach involves transforming computers into single-purpose devices reminiscent of the earliest macs and pcs utilizing blocking software like freedom helps limit distractions and increase productivity despite some considering this a heretical move it is about enhancing focus and productivity not diminishing the computer's power in a world where attention is more valuable than commodities like oil digital minimalism and the tools embraced by the attention resistance empower individuals to prioritize what truly matters and safeguard their autonomy in the face of pervasive attention grabbing strategies digital minimalism is a response to the dangers posed by the addictive nature of digital media and the attention economy the deliberate efforts by companies to make their products addictive combined with the negative impact of increased exposure to these products on our health necessitate a re-evaluation of our relationship with smartphones and digital services by adopting the methods and principles of digital minimalism individuals can reclaim their attention leading to a more satisfying and fulfilling life actionable advice delete social media from your phone when applying the principles of digital minimalism many people find that the drawbacks of social media outweigh the benefits if you have compelling reasons to maintain a social media presence consider deleting the app from your phone and accessing it only through a web browser this small adjustment can significantly improve your life by either revealing that social media wasn't beneficial or transforming you into an optimal user who spends minimal time on it freeing up more time for high quality pursuits a sincere thank you for joining us until the end showcasing your dedication to personal growth and wisdom your support not only broadens the channel's reach to a wider audience but also plays a pivotal role in fostering its continuous growth as a token of gratitude i commit to consistently delivering insightful book reviews sourced from some of the most impactful books in the world thank you for being part of this journey